Yo, what's good H-Town? It's Mo here again with the Houston Dynamo and last week on Kicking It, we hung out with the Dash's Veronica Lotsko and we had a blast. And by we, I mean Paloma, but this week I'm back with the Dynamo and I'm about to bless your timeline with some fantastic curls and an even better accent. That's right, I'm talking about Kyle Adams. Now, just as a refresher on this program, we do it in three segments. The first is called the first kick. That's where we do a deep dive into something that the player's passionate about. Second, socially awkward. That's where we do a little bit of creeping on their social media, pick three posts that we think we could go a little further into. And last but not least is quarantine essentials. In this unprecedented time, we've got to know what's helping you get through it. So without further ado, let's kick it with Kyle Adams. Yo, what's up, everybody? We're back here with another episode of Kicking It. Two weeks ago, we had Michael Salazar. Last week, we kicked off the dash, kicking it with Veronica Latsko. And this week, we've got Kyle Adams. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, we'll go ahead and jump right into our first segment, which is called the first kick. And that's whenever we do a little bit of a dive into something that you're passionate about, something that really drives you off of the pitch. Um, and so far, based on my research, and that's what I'll call it, not creeping, um, is your dog, your adorable dog, and uh, hiking. Um, I'm not entirely sure how super into hiking you are, but you do you do, uh, you do do uh, a lot of it more than most people, I feel like. So, yeah, um, yeah let's start off with the dog, though. Like, tell us a little bit about, a, a little bit about her. Uh, her name's Evie. Uh, she just turned four. We had a nice little birthday party for her. Um, lots of toys and lots of dog cookies. And then um, she's Border Collie, Corgi mix. Her favorite thing is chasing squirrels. And uh, I adopted her in Tijuana. So she's a, a little Mexican baby, I guess. <laughs> Mexican papers. Um, but the only downside to that is she's a Cholos fan. So I'm not sure how well that goes down with Houston people. <laughs> I think I think you, you might find a niche group here that will uh, take her in, let them be part of their supporters groups. Uh, <laughs> maybe a mascot. I don't know. I don't know. You'll find yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for uh, sure. <laughs> but she's also a Dynamo fan, so it's okay. Of course, of course. I need to get Maxwell to make me one of those little shirts that she can wear to wear around. <laughs> yes, Maxwell, Chris, if you're watching. <laughs> make it happen like let, let's move on to a little bit about the the hiking um and uh, honestly it the hiking first and then then we could bring in how evie's gone on some of these hikes with you and you all have some of the coolest most adorable photos yeah. so let, how did you get into hiking and and where did that all come from uh so i guess being from new zealand it's a obviously a beautiful place with lots of nature and stuff like that and um I can't say I went on a lot of hikes in New Zealand, but I felt like you're just always surrounded by it. Um, and then when I came to the US, my brother and his wife were really big on hiking and they lived in San Diego, which is where I was. And so I'd go on hikes with them and their dog, Copper. Um, and he loved it. And then when I got Evie, it was just kind of like, we all go together and look, watching those two chase after each other or run around through the bushes, making sure we're still following them sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know, it just kind of fit right in hand in hand. and. Um, the places I've been in San Diego and then um, in Arizona when I've been there, up in Oregon, there's some beautiful, beautiful places that I've been to go hike in. Um, I can't say I've done, I've done one in uh, San Antonio and Austin um, in the start of this year or end of last year. But other than that, I ha can't say I have done a lot in Texas, but I'm really looking forward to go to Big Bend and hopefully do some there at the end of the season. I know you kind of, you, I, I think you kind of briefly mentioned it, but but I have a uh, a little bit of a a little bit of a, a anecdote there about hiking. The first hike I ever went on, which kind of made me want to hike more, was in Tucson a couple of years ago. And I, there's a reason it shouldn't make me want to hike more, but I'll get to that in a second. But like, uh, I saw you guys. I, I think I think you guys might have already been heading back by the time Madi and Edgar and I were heading up. But it was like you, Kevin Garcia, Joe Willis, um, and y'all were uh, y'all were doing that hike out in Tucson a couple of years ago in preseason, um, and that one was beautiful. Yeah, it was so uh, nice you... through the canyon there. So nice. Yeah, absolutely. And and I mean, it was. 
Okay, so what happened to me was when I when we made it, I, I forget we, we we made it all the way up to the to the waterfall, and then we we came back. But at the waterfall, I was like trying to be like I don't know like Bear Grylls or something, and I'm like <laughs> jumping across some like stream of water uh, in like not hiking boots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just <laughs> slip, man. Yeah, I just slip and just land on the on my side, and it. it probably 30 feet away from the edge and like literally the edge of the waterfall all the way down and i just remember turning and looking at edgar and his face is just like like i i think he like really thought he was about to see me stumble off of the edge and like i don't know if he was concerned about me or just like worried how he's gonna tell everybody that they came back alone and like they were down a videographer but like (laughs) kind of messed up they didn't like trying to help you just gotta sit there and watch you happen well he was he was he was probably like 20 feet away like doing his own thing you know like he wasn't right next to me so i want to give you like the two step and like reach out like try and grab you (laughs) yeah but like it doesn't matter because you're right. It was so beautiful. Like on the way back, like it was, it was but like I'm still here and this sunset is incredible. Yeah. Everything about this is beautiful. And it really made me want to hike uh, a little more. And now after hearing your story, I just want to hike and get a dog to go hiking with. So, <laughs> I mean, they are great, great hiking companions. I'll tell you that. And I think just from what you're saying that those the Tucson, Arizona sunsets and sunrises through the canyons, they're beautiful. and. That's coming from a beach, beachy kid. I love the beach. I love the sunrises and sunsets of the beach, but those at desert Arizona ones are pretty underrated, I think. Awesome. This is where we'll freeze frame it and then a visit Tucson sponsored by will come over this. <laughs> I mean, I did. And I'll, I'll, I'll send you. I got to give them a little bit of love. I played there for a summer, so I got to give them a little bit of love. Oh, sweet. So they'll probably send you the check then. Yeah. Just give me my. <laughs> I'll give you a little commission. <laughs> there you go. It, yeah, man. So, I mean, you have you have some of these sunsets and these these strolls on your Instagram, and that's a perfect segue to our next segment. That segment is called socially awkward. That's whenever we do a little dive into your social media, and you know, I'll be I'll be real. Just like I told Michael, like you're you're kind of one of the lucky ones because you post some cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Nothing's too embarrassing, but there <laughs> there were some posts that I just I either needed some context or a little bit more. Uh, behind it, they're yeah. all they're all Instagram posts, so don't worry, they're all Instagram posts. I'm not gonna ask you to contextualize a random tweet from like three years ago or something. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I barely use Twitter, so there wouldn't be anything on that to use. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> all right, so let, let's. This is the first one I chose right here. Can you see that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. The uh, Adams Family Champ. Tell me a little about that. Yeah, so that was that was me and my uh, brother and sister in law and we went go karting. I think they took me go karting for my birthday, um, but that's kind of like I grew up with that a lot because my dad was actually go karting when he was um, and he's like as a kid growing up, he was a big go karter. So it was kind of a big deal to uh, win those races back home in New Zealand with my dad and my brother and stuff like that. Um, and I remember the first time, like thirteen, I think. Um, when I finally beat my dad and my brother and they were pissed because bo- my brother had been driving like driving for three years because he's six years older than me and then my dad obviously <laughs> was like, like actually raced go-karts <laughs> so they were so pissed that I beat them when I was 13. Man, so that's crazy. So this is something that your family has always kind of done. Was it frequent or just like... I wouldn't say it was frequent but we did it enough to like where we got Oh, pretty good at it, especially like me and my brother. Um, but then, like, we were always my dad always like got us into um, just like the different race car events and stuff like that. Like, F- big. My dad loves F one, and uh, we went to a few rally events they had in New Zealand. And um, yeah, just kind of racing was a little bit in the blood, not like enough to get me into it like full time. But uh, we always uh, were pretty passionate about it. There any uh, <clears throat> any plans to, to race again uh, to, to to defend that title? Uh, we me and my brother really want to. I think when my dad comes over and visits, we probably will. Um, but me and my really really good friend have talked about doing the Baja California Rally when I retire. So that's something like oh, we really word. Do. Yeah, that, so. 
That's awesome. Dang, yeah. you heard it here first, uh, Dynamo fans. Keep an eye out for the for the future racing champ here, man. That's, <laughs> that's really awesome, though. All right, the second photo that I chose. All right, here we go. Where were you at? Vieja Serena. Oh, that was, uh, yeah, I, I went to the Fall Out Boy concert there. That's, uh, I mean, San Diego State, uh, that's like where I went to school and that was the basketball arena. And uh, Fall Out Boy came and uh, went to that. And that was, I, that was my second ever concert. And still, I think my second ever concert. I don't go to a lot of concerts. Um, I guess I'm not like a big music fan. I love music, but I just, I'm not really that passionate about going to see them live, I guess. Um, no, but it was a really, really cool performance. I. Yeah, they had gone all over the place, fireworks, stuff like that, and it was really, really, really cool. All right, so the last one uh, that I want to get some context on is this one, man. Tell me a little bit about this. Oh, that's uh, that's one of my tattoos I have on my forearm. Um, I got it right before I signed, oh, right after I signed for the Taros, I guess, so the start of 2018, before I moved to the Valley. Um, but it was just because my... Uh, it was because my grandparents just recently passed away and it was for them. Um, and my grandparents last name is Vandenberg, which means from the mountain. So that's what the two mountains in the bear represent. And then the bear is for California, which was my new home, I guess. And then I had this, I don't know if you can see the detail on it, but there's uh, the Southern Cross, the stars up above it. And they uh, represent, it's like the North Star, but in the Southern Hemisphere. So it like points south, I guess, for sailors. Um, and New Zealand has it in their um, flag and it kind of just like shows like that that's where home I always know where home is if that makes sense yeah for sure that's that's a that's a lot better answer than most people gave on their tattoos so that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> that, was awesome. my thing. that was my thing with my parents like my parents weren't super happy about me getting tattoos but as long as I had like a somewhat good meaning for it they were okay with it and that's the one my mom is I guess the least upset about me I think. Oh, and rightfully so I mean, it's a beautiful tattoo first of yeah. all and secondly it's uh the meaning behind it and everything uh all the nuances and the meaning is is fantastic um speaking of tattoos and and, and you actually having meaning to your tattoos there's something that we want to do on the video end for the dynamo is kind of take some of you guys that have tattoos and and stuff like that and do like a, a tattoo series with y'all is that something you'd be interested of in course. that's awesome yeah. yeah, for sure. Cool, man. We'll keep you in mind, and 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 we'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely know, uh, definitely let you know if that that becomes to fruition. So, the last thing that we've got uh, on our last segment here is called quarantine essentials, and 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 in this uh, unprecedented time, everybody's just kind of trying to do what they can to to stay sane and healthy, and and kind of get through every day. Um, are there any specific things that are helping you kind of just? ease through this and, and get through it as, as easy as possible if you can think uh, of three things that'd be awesome i guess playstation um evie my dog um and my girlfriend nice nice just keep keeping you keeping you nice and sane and relaxed and just try not to worry about too much of what's going on for sure yeah. Pretty much. I mean, I play PlayStation with my friends. I wouldn't say I'm any good at 2K or FIFA or Call of Duty, but it's something to do to pass the time. And then, I mean, walking EV three times a day, just at least you get outside and it kind of, you can kind of walk. You plan on going for a 30 minute walk, it turns into a 45 minute walk and it kills a little more time than you thought. Um, hopefully, you've been, you've been, um, you've been able, that's been able to really help you and you've been taking it easy and cool. Uh, hopefully we can get back on that training pitch pretty soon. Uh, yeah, oh, all I want to do is play 5v2. That's all I want to do, play some Ronda. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to give to the Dynamo fans before we before we call this? Uh, um, just I, we can't wait to be back on the field. I know we're we're staying busy. We're having lots of conference calls and uh, learning a lot about each other and um, continuing to learn about how Tab and the coaches want us to play and. We can't wait to be back on the field playing for you guys in, in BBVA. Awesome, man. Dude, thank you so much for taking some time out no of problem. your day, Kyle. Um, we're all get eager to uh, to get the season back going again and, and just to, to, to see you guys in orange and, and to get the tab era started. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for having definitely me. Hope yeah, for, for sure. We'll see you soon, man. Take it easy. All right.